Welcome back. Let's talk about the markets. We have been struggling over the last couple of days, but today there is a relief rally and we're holding up with a gain of close to about 0.4%. Uh, Pratik Paring, the equity strategist at Nuvama Group, is now joining in to discuss the way forward. Uh, Pratik, even if there is no risk right now or a minimal probability of a large-scale systemic bank collapsing either in the US or Europe, which could result in a long and deep recession, the truth is these large US banks and European banks are going to turn a bit cautious. Some of them said that you know even the mid-regional banks are freezing on their lending and what we could have on our hands is a slowdown, an accelerated slowdown compared to what the market was penciling in. Does this pose big growth risks for the Indian market? Because the narrative up until now is that Indian markets will continue to see good growth in FI24 and therefore once this volatility ebbs, um, Indian markets will pick up in the second half of the trade. But is there a risk to that growth estimate, this EPS pickup estimate for the Indian markets for FI24? Yeah, hi. Yeah, hi, Rima. Thanks for having me over. Uh, I think if you look at it, right, uh, the current fallout or the current crisis that we are having, this time around, it is more of a duration or interest rate risk uh, rather than a lending or a credit risk that we had during GFC. So to that extent, I think the chances or the, the magnitude of the problem is significantly lower this time versus what we have had in the past. Uh, this problem can be very quickly fixed by cutting interest rates. Uh, and to that extent, at least that gives some comfort. But nonetheless, Rima, as you rightly said, I think the growth outlook is where the challenges are a bit more, especially from a very near-term perspective. Uh, if you look at it, even before SVB fallout happened, the monetary setup globally was not very conducive. Uh, yield curves had flattened uh, very sharply. You had one of the deepest inversion in yield curve. Uh, you had you know, global money supply growth uh, slowing down very sharply. And all these things are not very conducive from a growth outlook perspective. So to that extent, this event only accelerates the near-term growth outlook. Now, if I look at the transmission of these global events to Indian markets or Indian earnings, the transmission typically happens to three channels. One is the exports channel, which is your IT services, your pharma, you know, your chemical company sales. Second is your prices or commodity price uh, uh, earnings channel. And the third is the liquidity channel. Now, typically all these three work together, but this time there are a lot of leads and lags. If you look at last year, last year we had you know, IT stocks correcting very sharply because of concerns on the growth outlook as well as margins which are weakening. So to some extent, the trade part of it has been priced in the markets. Uh, commodity uh, companies you know, have had a bad start to the year so far. Uh, this is despite China's unlocking. So prices for also things have been priced in. But what has been the real laggard this time on the liquidity channel? Uh, last year, despite the whole global sell-off in asset prices, you had Indian financials and Indian cyclical by capital goods doing very good. Uh, this is a historical anomaly. And the simple reason for that was, well, globally, you know, Fed and central banks were tightening and so was RBI. The domestic financial condition was still very benign. Uh, you had lack, the banking sector liquidity is still in surplus. Uh, and to that extent, the pain of tightening was not yet felt. But if I look at it now, the LAF surplus has vanished. India's very own yield curve, which is a very good proxy for banking profits, has flattened. Uh, and also, we are now seeing signs of consumption slowdown. So to that extent, I think the growth outlook certainly does look a bit more worrisome from FI24 perspective. Uh, so to that extent, we do remain cautious, even if there are no further follow-ups. But having said that, I would like to mention that unlike the past crisis, where you know once we have entered the crisis, we have taken a lot of time to come back. Uh, we have had scarring, for example, you know post GFC when you had European debt crisis, we had corporate sector, the whole NPL cycle unraveling. Uh, after ILF, the NBFC crisis, you know, it took a lot of time to fix. This time around, uh, in, domestically at least, you have the banking system balance sheets very strong, and also uh, the corporate balance sheets being very strong. So once we are on the other side of the recovery, I think the recovery should be much quicker and the scarring of the economy uh, should not be there so much this time per se anymore. So yes, overall, I think from a growth outlook perspective, you know, it does warrant some caution per se. Would you mentioned uh, the positive as well, Pratik. We've been getting so much of negative news, right? But you have to say it uh, like it is. I completely get that. So <clears throat> in light of that analysis, tell us how uh, your portfolio is uh, positioned right now. Uh, are you being a little more defensive in nature? <clears throat> and also, I mean, the third quarter anyway gave us an indication that corporate earnings aren't uh, running away in a hurry. We saw some downgrades. Do you see that accelerating Q4 onwards? 
And what is the uh, the earnings estimate, FY24, uh, that you're working with at least right now? Yeah. Uh, so if you look at the FY24 estimates, consensus is forecasting anywhere between 15 to 18% growth. Uh, we do see some downside risk over there. Uh, and from a portfolio perspective, our main philosophy is that if you look at 2022 or FY23, the concern on earnings was on the margins front. Uh, you know, because of your rising input prices, uh, IT companies were hiring big time. So to that extent, it was the margins that really should be earnings. But as we move to CY23 or FY24, I think the main earnings pain point potentially can be on the demand part. Uh, I think the top line, uh, the key drivers, which is exports, prices, and liquidity are all turning upwards. So I think from a next year perspective on the earnings part, you know, you will see demand slowing down. So from a portfolio construct perspective, our philosophy is to buy into sectors where demand, uh, the demand risks are very low, uh, and also sectors which will benefit from falling input prices. And finally, in an environment where liquidity is tightening, we would stick with the ultra defensive portfolio uh, and would avoid companies uh, uh, with uh, any leverage of sorts per se. So in such context, we are overweight staples, uh, we are overweight uh, cement, where we think, you know, with falling input prices, the profitability should come up. Uh, we are overweight, you know, insurance as well, despite what has happened in the budget. And also we are overweight uh, IT, where while there are concerns on the global front, but our main thesis is that in IT, unlike past, margins are likely to do better. And finally, uh, IT being a cash rich sector, uh, typically outperform during all global recessions. So to that extent, uh, we avoid that and we underweight all the cyclicals, whether it's domestic or global, because our belief is that the current slowdown is broadening, at least so from a cyclical perspective, we are very <laughs> defensive and we have underweights in financials, industrials, even durables, where we think the valuations are very high and with demand slowing down, uh, you know, there is some caution that is warranted per se. All right, uh, Pratik, you're sounding extremely cautious, but you know, one space I want to ask you about, because we have been talking a lot about this, is what's going on with real estate, right? It's so mixed in terms of the fact that luxury sales seem to really be going through the roof. There's no sort of problem with demand, at least that's what it looks like right now. But on the other hand, maybe the affordable segment is not really, you know, quite there yet. Is this something that you think is worth looking at in terms of just an investment perspective, the real estate stocks? Yeah, uh, again, you know, great question. So I think real estate stocks are one of the deeper cyclicals per se. Uh, they are one of the early cyclicals as well. So I think when the tide turns and we have deep rate cuts, uh, real estate stocks will turn attractive. But at the current juncture, you know, we would remain cautious on some of the real estate teams as well. Uh, because as you rightly said, that this time real estate recovery has been too track. That we had luxury sales doing very good, but the affordable segment not doing so well. Going ahead, you know, with the concerns on layoffs in the tech sector, so on and so forth, uh, and interest rates rising very sharply, even the luxury space, there's a risk can see a slowdown. Uh, so to that extent, I think from a demand uh, perspective, real estate can face some headwinds. And given the deep cyclicality over here, you know, some moderation in prices, some moderation in demand, uh, the whole valuations and all those framework can change very quickly. So that's why on the real estate front, while the longer term outlook is great, but the excess supply has been cleaned out, uh, there has been a reasonable amount of consolidation and for 10 years, the cycle hasn't been there uh, per se. So while from a longer term, it's very great, but I think from a near term perspective, which is over, uh, over the next six to 12 months, uh, caution is warranted on the real estate space per se, because we still think that you know things are not uh, completely out of woods and here they are staring at a slowdown going ahead over here. You know, Pratik, that point about, uh, you know, the tech layoffs uh, possibly hurting real estate is quite true. So many companies we've chatted with, you know, off the record seem to indicate that in FI24, IT companies are going to moderate their wage bill after the extraordinary two years in terms of promotion and wages. So salaries are going to come down, um, you know, and plus, of course, layoffs are there. So maybe, you know, Bangalore real estate could get a bit of, uh, you know, hit because if growth is slowing down for the IT companies, margin lever is something that they will look to flex and that's going to be done with uh, attrition coming down it's going to be done why that wage bill number uh, but thank you very much uh, Pratik for joining in we'll slip into a break on the other side we'll get you more on the markets <laughs>